Welcome to the Mountain Visit Podcast on the Top 100 Sports Network. I'm one of your hosts, Casey Honigbaum, joined, as always, by the 13-year Major League veteran and MLB All-Star, Jason Grilly. This is your reminder to follow the show on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch the show, if you like to do that, on our Top 100 Sports Network YouTube page. You could follow our social media accounts in case you want to let us know of any guests you might want to hear from in the future or topics you want covered on episodes in the future as well. And without further ado, let's get into today's episode with Drew Maggi. It. We had a late night mound visit, but it's because we got a special guest, Drew Maggi here. We got uh, the podcast where we got the fascinating world of baseball and stories. And what a, what a story, Drew Maggi. If you guys haven't followed baseball, you've been under a rock. Uh, we have a great baseball story right here. So, Drew, thanks for coming on the show, man. We're so excited to have you, brother. Thanks for having me, guys. Good to be here. Drew, I want to ask you. First, for those who are watching, which you can do on our Top 100 Sports YouTube channel, talk to us a little bit about the thought behind that shirt because that is a, I mean, you look like you're in sunny California with that thing. Well, on. I, I love it. I'm actually about to go play 18. Three and a half hour, 11 a.m. game. Still got 18 with the brother coming. So yeah. we just grind. I just grind all day. Look at this. What's going on? And I'm going low. You know, people don't realize right there, and that's, you know, like, there's so much to talk about in one sentence. I don't think I can do it. Just with that loaded statement you just made. You just played 11 a.m. game for some some kids, right? These kids screaming kids. Kids day. Kids day. Oh. I remember those days, headache. Uh, love the kids, but gosh, it's it's a tough tough uh, crowd noise. It's not the one. Oh, it's, I mean, it's it's unbelievable the energy they have. I mean, it's con. it's nine innings of just yelling. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And then you're going out golfing to calm down and wrap your club around. Are you a good golfer or are you going to wrap it around? I'm all right. I play both ways, so that should tell you how good I am. <laughs> it's uh, about 75 in. I play righty. Wow. My drive long irons are all lefty. So Ooh. I don't know how it happened, Jeez. but just about okay. a 12, 12 to 15, you know, up and down game. That's, yeah. that's an interesting. That's an interesting golf uh, dynamic right there. You got two bags. <laughs> you got two G's in your last name. You got two golf bags. <laughs> I got about twenty clubs. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's, yeah. that's a heavy that's a golf eagle, bag right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, th- I mean, again, I I know Grilly said it, and and kind of like you mentioned for those baseball fans who live under a rock and might not know your story i mean just an incredible story and finally obviously like everyone was able to see this year with you making it to the major leagues and and you know getting that that cup of coffee in the show and can you just talk to us i'm sure you've been asked this question a zillion times but i'm sure people want to hear it again what was that moment like for you what was that experience like and um you know have you been are you still riding that high of what that that experience was like for you? I mean, it was it was absolutely nuts. Yeah. I completely unexpected. You know, I was hitting about 120 in double A grinding. I think the night before I had I had a bad air, you know, just kind of struggling here and we came in and we had a. We knew it was going to rain all day, so we we had a late clubhouse. Get here at two, game at four, raining all day. About one fifty, I called Uber. It's about twenty minutes to the field, and we got a group text that said, "Hey, we got a team meeting at two. So obviously, you know, I'm twenty minutes out. So I texted my manager Krabby and told him, "Hey." I'm probably not going to make the meeting. I'm about 20 minutes away. He said, <laughs> no, you too. How about that? He, he said, all right. And so I get in, get in an Uber. Everyone, the whole team's blowing me up. Texted me, this is Bush. Where are you? <laughs> you? You would be the only guy not here calling me. And I'm like, guys, fuck off. Like, I'm. this is, I, I texted Krabby. I'm good. Start the meeting, you know. And you got to remember in double A, 
you have meetings out the ass. So uh, it's it's constant, constant meetings. So I'm just thinking it's another meeting. So I walk in there, everyone's dressed. I get clapped in. And so I sit down, I rip my shirt off, and I, yeah, I'm like, all right, what's the meeting? Let's go. What do we got? And I could tell right away, Crab, it was a serious meeting, like a little different just by his tone, demeanor. Right. And, and then I quickly realized that somebody was going to the big leagues. And, you know, for me, it was, you know, I've been in those meetings a thousand times. So, and it's never been me. So I kind of was like, oh, who do we got? You know, who's going? And when he said my name, it was just, I mean, it was complete shock. I, my body went numb. Wow. mind racing like just didn't you know like the when you have to check you're like did he just say my name and so yeah it just kind of and then i just let out a big let's fucking go and i don't know where that came from but i mean it was just cool you know I, I, everything uh that whole day man it's just i can remember everything that call my mom she it was funny though because i called her and i go mom and she, she could tell right away something was weird and she was like what's wrong and i was like i'm going up and I, i'm in double a so she goes oh you're going to indy <laughs> and i was like no mom i'm going to the big leagues and then she we had a night like she got all emotional and so man just the whole week and i know it was quick but it just i mean it was special like every day was just special man yeah no this said uh, it I'm wearing I'm wearing my uh, black and black and gold here, so I feel like a bee because if you see the, my allergies are so bad because all this pollen, I feel like a bee. But also, I'm <laughs> representing Drew Maggi. I want you to come back and rock number 39. I'm so happy that you kept that number going, and what a story to be in that thing. And I can tell you, like you, bro, uh, I had like a seven and a half ERA when I got my call up. I didn't think I was getting called up. I'm like, you got to be doing something good, right? to be called up and in the mode so i think it hits you hard because you're like oh shit i gotta get ready because i'm yeah. not I'm not doing hot here my confidence is kind of like you said in the grind mode and uh now i'm gonna go who am i going to play against who's pitching that night i had to go i'm facing the atlanta braves and i was like uh i gotta get my shit together right now, <laughs> you know for my big league debut so i i feel that um but if I may, dude, uh, get personal and say, say you want to share it, not share it. When we, you came from Broke Bread and had some rock and ball wine at my house not too long ago when you were in Pittsburgh, it was awesome. And, and I still get chills and have tears in my eyes. Listen to the song that your mother played for you. Can you, can you share that moment with us? Because I think it's, you talked about your mom. I know she's special to you. We all have great moms. Your mom's a ride or die. I can see with you. Tell her, tell us about that song and that moment, because I know your faith is huge, man. Yeah, so, uh, so she, she had been trying to get me to listen to this song for a couple weeks. She's like, it's 15 minutes, but I, I promise you, it's really good. And you know, I was grinding in Double A, so you know, you're like, all right, mom, I'll listen to it. I'll listen to it. Kind of drag it on. So we were, it was probably my, it was my third day there, and I hadn't played yet. So we were, it was just us two up in the room. I was doing a bunch of interviews at the time. And I think she could tell I was a little stressed out. And so, yeah, she was like, let's listen to this song. And, you know, I was just, I was, kind of, I was stressed. I was, you know, kind of pissed, kind of like, just didn't want to, you know, I just kind of wanted to be in my own thoughts. And she just put it on in front of me on the laptop, had the video going and, I mean, this thing hit me like a ton of bricks. It was from the very, I watched the whole video through and I just completely lost it, man. I broke down and, you know, we, we shared a moment together. I hugged her. I told her I loved her and, you know, thank you for everything. And it, I mean, it was just powerful stuff. And then, you know, that night I ended up getting in and, you know, the Pirates fans had my back cheering my name. It was just you know, we prayed together too that before I left, and it just it got really spiritual for me the the whole day. So it was, I mean, I you, you heard the song. That song is incredible. I, I mean, I listen to it, you know, every every other day now. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's an incredible song. Maybe can we put a link? Yeah, yeah, to it. 
I think it'd be great to absolutely. To yeah, we'll put the link, the link in the uh, the description of this video. Absolutely. Yeah, I I, I think uh, you know it. You talking about your mom? It you know it it you can't help but get a little emotional even just from an outsider's perspective looking in because I think about my own mom and you know with my baseball career obviously you know it didn't it did not last and it hasn't lasted as as long as yours did but just how supportive she was and you know you know supporting me through high school and college baseball and all of that and um you think about the people in your life who have made an impact on you and who have helped support you and helped you get to where you are today has that kind of been one of those driving factors? I mean, because you think about it, and obviously people know the story by now, but you know, you're playing, you play 13 years in the minor leagues. Was was there a thought process behind, you know, maybe, you know, I got, I want to stick this out. I want to get to the show because I want to, you know, whether it was obviously it's fulfilling your own dream, but was part of you thinking about your family and all those people who have supported you along the way as well? I, I mean, absolutely. The, I mean, my mom is my psychological best friend. I've, I've, you know, 10 to 15 friends that will reach out to me middle of the season, kind of give me, like, little reminders. So, you know, usually it's, like, a YouTube video or something, you know, something from Gladiator or something keeps going. But, um, yeah, man, I think over 13 years you kind of you kind of adjust so many times. You know, it's you have a different mindset each year. And a lot of years it was, yeah, I mean, when I first started with Pittsburgh, it was, you know, I want to play for the Pittsburgh Pirates. They were the first team that believed in me. You know, it was kind of a little more pure. And then as I kind of bounced around to different teams, you know, it kind of just became get to the big leagues, get to the big leagues. And then, you know, year 10 when your body's, you're kind of feeling a little more. Now you're just trying to hang on, you know, try to get to the next year try to keep playing keep giving yourself chances and that's kind of what I did and you know so the last three years it was really just keep the body right you know try to keep going and just yeah try to you know whatever I had to do whether it was on the field or in the locker room I had to make calls that I didn't want to make just anything to, to get me back on the field to be able to get a chance to you know what happened with Pittsburgh the other night, you know, just to be able to live that moment and, you know, get that opportunity was, yeah, I think just a, a testament to just, you know, making adjustments because, you know, you can, like, like Grilly said, you know, your numbers, you can be dominating and you could be sitting in triple A and then out of nowhere, you know, you're not playing that well. And then out of a sudden you're playing the Dodgers and you're like, holy, you know, so it's, it's just kind of crazy to think about, but, but yeah, definitely, you know, the people in my life, my mom is just, I mean, she's the number one supporter for me. She's, I mean, she, she's probably taking it harder than me, honestly. I mean, cause she's just, she's all, we're, we're, li- we're connected in a way, you know, spiritually and she, you know, she, she could see how tough it was on me throughout the journey and. You know, I had a lot of fun, too, so I'm not saying that, you know, it was all this, you know, hardship, but to be able to get to that final goal and that dream, you know, I think it was a, a big weight lifted off our shoulders, and and now it's just kind of a different mindset, you know, it's kind of like, I want to get back up to Pittsburgh and yeah. help the team in. Yeah, you got a taste now, brother, you know that's the only place to play this game. Yes. The way you feed, the way you fly. The bed you sleep on on the road, uh, and and I know you said you enjoyed that in D.C. when you were telling me how <laughs> even when you got your two knocks and you thought you were being shipped out and they made you stay, that was a good story too. But, you know, Waiting on You, the song that we talked about, we mentioned, we didn't name the name of it, but Wait on You, uh, incredible because you, you waited a long time and, and much deserved. And I'm, I'm waiting for you to get called back up, and I hope I, I could say this, Conflict, Casey and I were talking about the game. Ever since they sent you out, bro, it's been a different team. You They've know? only so, had five bro. wins since since they sent you back down. So, so you know, it, catalyst over here. We got to get know. the fights on back up there. I mean, yeah, I'm not – no comment there. <laughs> <laughs> it, hey, momentum changer. So I'm 
right? Well, hey, another guy that believes in you, bro, we had on the show is Ed Blankmar. Mm -hmm. He spoke nothing but accolades about you. I know. Tell me. Tell me your relationship with Blanky and what he's done for you in your career because he's touched a lot of good players' lives, man. He mentioned a lot about you. Blank is my guy, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we he was the first base coach, kind of infield guy with with Team USA when I played in college, and we were really close. We, uh, you know, we uh, we were in Japan. We went to Chinese uh, Chinese Taipei. Uh, we went into North Carolina, and from the get-go, Blank and I just, we connected. You know, we kind of had that that blue-collar, kind of tough guy personality, and we would go on walks together. We would talk baseball. Nice. Our personalities just mesh, man. He he kept me out of a lot of trouble, too. He, guy, <laughs> he could kind of see when I would get kind of in a mode, and he knew how to calm me down. So... Yeah, he, I mean, that whole team, I mean, there was a lot of good coaches on that team, but Blank and I, I mean, he felt like a second dad out there. So uh, he's I, an amazing, amazing, remember. amazing uh, mentor, uh, just person, and a wealth of plethora of baseball knowledge. So I know well, he imparted a lot on you. He me he mentioned a story about you, Drew. Um, I think, I want to say it was, it, might, it must have been the championship game when you guys were playing Cuba on that Team USA team. And he was telling me, and I, I might have mixed up some of the facts here, but he said that when you guys lost, he said he had to like someone had to hold you back from fighting the other. I was hit. Well, I was more I was more mad about we didn't make a, a pitching change. I didn't like the matchup. That's what. And, yeah. I mean, it, it was just a heated game, you know. We're playing for a gold medal. Yeah. I mean that whole. That whole I mean, we played Japan. We were we were down four zero. We came back. I mean, the whole thing was was testy. You know, you're in a different country. You know, you got to bring a little edge. You know, you got to. I mean, it's the way you win gold. And you know, I think it was just like the end of it. We had lost, and I was just built up. Yeah. And yeah, Blake definitely. I mean, he wouldn't leave. He kept like bouncing in front of me, and I I wasn't going after anybody, but I just wanted to, you know. Like you guys won, but this went a couple more innings. We had you. Yeah, mm, you, man. You brought you brought the paisano. You played. You should have been playing for team for Team Guido. I know. Well, I didn't get. Yeah, they didn't give me a shot. Yeah, I, I was. I was a little upset. You know. I thought, hey, stay stay around long enough. Now that you're a big leaguer, you are a big leaguer. Now you can say that now. Okay, you're just doing a little other tour of duty before you get called back up. I think, I don't know, can you hang in there for another, was it three more years before the WBC again? I mean, I just played a three-and-a-half-hour game out of stolen. <laughs> <laughs> patience, bro. You got patience of a saint. Let's back it. Go. Let's get out. Let's get out by that paw on your belt and start hucking the pill, huh? That's oh right. My. I, I, everybody keeps asking me if I'm going to make a comeback. I said, as long as my six vertebrae that are uh, herniated just agree with me, unless there's a pill to fix it or a chiropractor, I can use every every third of the day, every eight hours, get an adjustment. Oh, my God. Drew, I got to ask you because um, it, it is, you know, Grilly asks about you hanging on for three more years, but were there ever times during this this journey that you've that you've been on um i mean there had to have been this is a, such a cliche question but there had to have been times where you were like all right like uh, i've been here for however many years i don't want to do this anymore and and if you had those thoughts what was it that made you you know be like no i'm gonna i'm gonna stick it on i'm gonna hang on another year kind of like you mentioned well i mean there was never like a quit yeah. mindset it was more it was more worry of, you know, kind of people like not getting calls, you know, it was, uh, cause I, I mean, I, I've always felt good and I, the, I've always been like, you know, they got to rip the Jersey off me to get me off the field yeah. unless I have some sort of injury. But I think the closest I got to, to kind of that moment was this off season. I was having dinner with my mom and. You know, I was coming off a tough year. I, I tore something in my wrist that I had to get a cortisone shot for. It was just a long year for me. I got traded here. Um, it was just one of those years that felt like it was, you know, about five. And 
before we were watching the World Series, we had a place called Hand Cut in Arizona, and yeah, we were just sipping on wine, and you know, we were just just kind of got personal, and I just told her, I was like, Mom, I don't know, I don't know how long I can do this for, you know, I'm a little worried, concerned that, you know, this might be it, and, you know, she basically talked me off a ledge that day, and we ended up, I mean, she told me, she took the words out of my mouth and said, you know, you always said that you would play until they rip it off you, and I'm glad that she did, because, you know, it, uh, it kind of re-motivated me to... To hold kind on of, to your word, man. Huh? She made you accountable to hold on to your word, where so, your heart was. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she uh, she kept me going there, and you know it. Uh, I mean, thank God she did, because none of this would have happened. And then you know, who knows what I'd be doing right now? Well, listen, you did make the big leagues before, and I, and I, I know I asked you to send this picture. It looks more like a Polaroid picture because I think it was probably when iPhone six was out, right? Right and 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 your mother. Your, speaking of your mother, I mean, we're talking about your mother. She's an awesome woman, uh, and I got to hang out with her when she when you guys came. But Drew sent me this picture she took from way over in the sidelines there. Yeah, baby. Look, it looks like a Polaroid picture. So he was in the big leagues before he even knew he was going to be a big leaguer. <laughs> well, that, that, that's the exhibition games. Yeah, it was like one of the last spring training yeah. games against the Phillies, right? In yeah. Phillies. Look at that flow, girl. <laughs> I need some, dude. There's a couple bald spots. We're getting a little light in some areas and all. I'm trying to stay like you, dude. It's coming for you, too. So hang on to your, your good shampoos. You know, you got all that special olive oil you're using after the game. It'll feel good on the golf course, right? <laughs> dude, I always – I my mom showed me that picture, like, every other year. You know, kind of a reminder that I was on a big league field. It's funny that it was you, you oh, know? Dude. Because, I mean, you were so cool to me. You and Russell Martin, I mean, you guys, I mean, because, you know, I was that young kind of guy. I didn't know what I was doing. And you guys, uh, you, you made that a cool experience for me. So well, I, I think if you were, a, you know, a nitwit, we wouldn't have said anything, you know. But you, you carried yourself differently. It's kudos to you. And like I said, you, for hanging in there a long time, people don't understand the intensity of what that takes, the mentality that it takes to grind like you have. And, and I had my own story. And yeah, people look at my career, but I said, you don't realize what each individual goes through. We all have our own story. And uh, it just, it is insane. Even guys that are long with standing, pitching with ailments and taking quarter zone shots and whatever it takes to be a big leaguer and help their team win. Because really, ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much money you make or how much money you don't make. You want that jersey on as long as possible. You want that championship ring. And if you meet some kind of flooding monkeys along the way, I met you. And how funny, like I said, Circle, Blankmire, all these connections. It's like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon game, so to speak. And that's kind of what Mound Visit is. We got all kinds <laughs> of crazy flying monkeys that we bring on our show. Um, but no, man, your story is stellar. It's inspirational. Uh, what would you tell a, a young kid... If you had to tell a young Drew Maggi, man, looking in the mirror t- today, what would you say to a younger version of yourself? If we talked about a kid in the top 100, what would you say to your younger self? Give him advice. Uh, I mean, honestly, just like roll with the punches, you know, keep it rolling, keep going. Um, you know, kind of what I did, honestly, I – a lot of times I had to put my head down, kind of swallow situations that I was in, you know, some really uncomfortable, embarrassing type situations that I kind of just had to, you know, kind of just roll, like get through. And, and then there was good times, there's good times and there's bad times. And it's just no matter what, kind of be present where you're at and just yeah, kind of grind it out, you know, put your head down some days. But also, I think, too, that was good for me is I I figured out, you know, ways, different ways than just the game of being able to hang on and play longer. You know, I became a great teammate. I, I learned from, from veteran guys how to be a clubhouse guy, how to carry myself in a room, how to, how to make other guys play better. I mean, it was very important for me always talking baseball 
always trying to get little little knowledge you know different places so i mean i just love the game so i mean i think that i would tell a kid I mean, if you love the game you know be dedicated to it kind of you know not just in you know hitting a ball a long way you know there's a lot of different ways that that you can get better and and keep your career going and know just advance your game to a level that you know you don't even know you can get to so and during those times when you have I, I had my briefcase on the back of the mound because I always loved and knew that I was going to be in a, out of the uniform longer than I was in it I, I'm sure like I said during these quiet times when you get to golf and just try to release some of that intensity do you see yourself being you know a coach after a movie star after you know <laughs> I uh, motivational speaker. What what what's what's something Rico that, Suave? Drew yeah, Maggi, take the uniform off. Tell us what Drew Maggi really is about, bro. I mean, I do. I would love to give back to the game in a way. You know, I, I love to manage. Um, you know, I'm also yeah. I'm getting some movie offers, so I mean, we'll see okay. how far it goes. Um, I mean, pro golf's probably not in the future. <laughs> That's that's probably uh, I'd probably have to you know be yeah. reborn for that. Golf but, from both sides is cheating. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and they, I use the putter, part three they putter. Some, they need some good uh, some good outfits like that on the live tour, I guess. So maybe maybe they'll let you on there. Who knows? They'll get <laughs> and it's like pure silk. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh, I love just it. Like your shirt, just like that big league shirt you got right yeah. there. Exactly. So, I w- hey, they're feeling different now. <laughs> I want, before we let you go, and you've been really generous with your time before you hop on the course, we really appreciate it. We had a couple of rapid fire questions for you. Um, and obviously, these are these are just some fun ones to end off the show. So um, just answer these. You don't have to give a super long answer, but we got a couple for you to get, get through here. So we want to ask, obviously, since you've played in a lot of different cities over your, your baseball career, what is the best food city that you've ever played in? I mean, probably Philly. Yeah. I mean, those Philly cheesesteaks were something else. I like it. Uh, yeah, probably Philly. Okay. All right. There we go. Philly cheesesteak guy. Keep it simple. I love it. I love it. All right. This one is that now you don't, th- this one might require you to throw one under the bus, but what's the most annoying, like, because I know I, you talk to guys who played minor league baseball and, and they're always like, you know, sometimes we're just in, in the middle of nowhere, just on a random, in a random city. Grillies talked about it before too. Talk about the most annoying city. Kind of, whether it's one that's in the middle of nowhere, one that you're just like, where the where the hell am I? What's that city here. for you? Get me out of that, here. That would be uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> okay. I, mean, that was, I mean, just the city itself, and then the the stadium was tough. I mean, you know, the the batting cage was in center field. <laughs> it was like being in a sauna. I mean, it was. I mean, you want to talk about a tough year? That was, and you had to hit the ball. You know, about 400 feet to get it out. Yeah, oh. Texas League, man, and they had those cages. Yeah. They, they had those cages above the, right, because it was going over the highway. If you hit one yeah. out, it was trying to prevent a car accident. <laughs> um, okay, last one here. What is the best minor league stadium that you've ever played in? I like Charlotte a lot. Mm. Charlotte, good. Um, I really like St. Paul. You know, Saint Paul, Minnesota is kind of a sleeper city for me. Okay, interesting. Okay, actually, we I lied. We did have one more because this is a really funny one that everybody out and, and there's a whole food uh, or a whole Instagram account, Minor League Grinders, um, which I'm sure you could attest to better than anyone. But sometimes we get some. There's some questionable pictures of food that come across the screen in terms of your meals that you get. Talk to us about the most suspect minor league meal you've ever had. If you could describe what the courses were or if there was only one course, what's the most suspect minor league meal you've ever had? We, I mean, we've had, I've had a bunch, <laughs> but there was one, there was actually recently, there was a, we had a chili in a pot and there was like weird cheese, oh, no. like fried around the pot. And I don't, I don't think people want to hear this, but I was 
boil it for like two or three days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, clubbies, clubbies are not cooks. Clubbies are not <laughs> cooks, right? Just cater the meal. Just wash my shoes and shock strap and my uniform and leave the cooking to the catering company, you know? Right? Oh. I learned it. if anything looks suspect, it's past. Go. Let's order some food. Just order the food. Words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Well, Drew, again, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us uh, about your your journey, Big your story. Doctor, man. Yes. Come back, bro. I can't wait to have you back to the farm. Get your ass back in Pittsburgh and get this team back where it was going, man. They were going good, and uh, I know you'll inject some good positivity. So thanks for going on the show. Hit them straight, bro. Hey, Enjoy thanks for time. Bro, love you. Thanks, Casey. We hope you enjoyed today's interview with Drew Maggi. Just an unbelievable story. We want to remind you again, before you get out of here, subscribe to the show on our YouTube channel if you like to watch. That's Top 100 Sports Network. You can also follow the show on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. The show is Top 100 Sports Network, and you can find Mound Visit in that as well. Follow the show, leave a review, and let us know who else you want to hear from and what other topics you'd like covered in the future. You can do that all on our social media channels at Top 100 Sports Net. Again, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Mountain Visit with Jason Grilling.